Welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast where you will find insight analysis and the story behind the numbers. Hello and welcome to the State of the Economy podcast. I am Nivedita Varadarajan. It is no secret that the gig economy is on the rise in India and around the world. A recent report by Taskmo, an on-demand staffing platform, suggests that there has been a 55% increase in gig workers participation in the workforce in India compared to last year. It also goes on to say that the job opportunities provided by the gig economy have jumped from 40 million to about 200 million jobs within just one year. Several reports suggest that demand for gig workers is across the skill spectrum. be it delivery partners packers sorters etc to marketers hr managers uh, and in the it services among others so there is a challenge here how do we provide social security to meet the requirement of these varied kind of workers some states are coming up with laws to meet this challenge rajasthan became the first state to pass a bill called the Rajasthan Platform Based Gig Workers Registration and Welfare Act 2023 to provide social security to these workers this bill was passed on the 24th of july could this be the way ahead in this episode i talk to dr deepika mg who is the associate professor at the school of business in the bangalore campus of amrita vishwa vidyapeetam to know more about the issue and what are some of the challenges ahead Thank you, Nivedita. So let's address the topic of the rising demand for gig workers. Is there a greater demand for gig workers in India because hiring and firing at will is not a common practice in India, and laws don't allow for it? Okay. So to this question, uh, Nivedita, when you are asking about uh, is the gig workers uh, in demand in rise in India because of uh, the hire and fire at will, I think it is difficult to. answer this particular question very specifically but before that you need to understand who these gigs are mm-hmm. you know gig is a pretty broad term i mean uh, there are different uh, types of gig workers seen in different sectors so to go with the standard definition of a gig work gig would could mean anything any type of a work which falls under non standard employment where the work is temporary and mm-hmm. the workers are paid separately for each work right so the mm-hmm. reason behind the choice of this gig work it varies across the sectors and the types of gigs so for some it could be like flexibility and work life balance in the it sector for example those females who are employed they may see you know the gig to be very convenient for them for some others it could be freedom from control from the employers mm-hmm. for other like on demand gig workers like uh, in the case of transportation or delivery who have largely migrated from the unorganized sector it is you know attraction to earn more and also the flexibility that have come together so in one of my recent studies that i conducted on sharing economies funded by the indian council for social science research recently i find that the gigs in the sectors of transport and delivery have chosen gig work because most of them as i said have migrated from unorganized sector and yeah. as you know in india the workers in the unorganized sector are not really treated well either yeah. in pay or in terms of respect in the workplace so when they saw this opportunity open they found this to be a better choice and that is what has drawn them to gig work so you can't put uh, all the gigs under the same basket so different gigs have different reasons or the choice behind the reason for the choice of the work so when workers shift from unorganized sectors to gig working is it considered that their job has become more formalized yes that is one of the greatest uh, you know advantages the gig or the the platforms have brought in actually there is some amount of uh, organizing of the unorganized labor because of the gig work that is very true so will they all be counted by some labor counting organization yeah so we, as of now we do not have official estimates of the gigs though the platforms all these platforms naturally have the database of uh, their gig workers but there are attempts made like for example the rajasthan bill what we are talking about yeah uh, it has made a provision that all the platform aggregators have to invariably register with their welfare board so naturally when the platforms get uh, registered you know the government can seek the information 
platforms on the uh, on the gig workers. So naturally, it is a move towards arriving at better estimates. Now, now, if all the other rest of the states like Rajasthan end up following, then naturally there is there is a move towards estimating uh, the size of the gig gig economy. Right now, do we even have an, an estimate of the number of workers who are gig workers? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are some uh, reports that I have uh, made available saying that the gig economy has been growing at 17%, 20%, and things like that. I think uh, SOCHAM, for example, it has some estimates available. But we do not have what is called as official estimates, you know, the co yeah. these, uh, companies or uh, some of these uh, consulting firms can arrive at their own estimates, but then we do not have official state estimates available on the gig workers in India as of now. Yeah, so that will be a problem, right? Because we don't have official estimate, we cannot make policies for them. But right. we... so there is an attempt made, that is what I'm saying. See, Rajasthan has come up with bill asking for this. Yeah. So there is provision over there. So when all the states like this, they end up coming up with their own uh, policies, naturally they will seek on this because if the social security provisions have to be given, Mm. Uh, to whom to give is a question, and that is where it calls for the classification of the gig workers. Now, for example, in India, I mean, as per the center's law, there is a Ishram portal, right? You would have yeah. heard of that. Yeah. Ishram portal um, is from the Ministry of Labor and Employment, where they are asking for all the unorganized workers to register there to get some social benefits. Now, uh, the thing is, this includes all kinds of workers. It is not simply for gig workers. So yeah. naturally, if you want to have exclusive, separate set of policies for gig workers, naturally, as you rightly said, you need estimates. And uh, the Code on Social Security does mention about this welfare board, and uh, it has recommended the states to set up the welfare board, grievance redressal mechanisms, uh, uh, you know, uh, and so on. There are some provisions over there. So this is an attempt towards that. So there is an attempt made to arrive at some kind of estimates. How do we provide social security for gig workers? Here, the, my problem is there are two issues for me here. One is defining social security for them and defining gig workers. Like we were talking a little bit earlier, we don't have categories for gig work. There are several categories of gig workers, right? So one is the independent contractor type who want yeah. to be their own boss, who have some technical skills which make their labor valuable. And then there's people who work in the unorganized sector, the contingent worker type, where right. they rely on platforms to give them employment. So when we have issues in both sides, how would we decide to give social security to gig workers? Okay, so let me uh, clarify on the kind of classification that you were making. We have better classification of the gig workers. Yes. In the literature, we can see uh, two types of gig workers. One is called the on-demand gig workers. Mm -hmm. The other are uh, the crowd-based uh, gig workers. Now, what you were speaking of the contingent workers, they broadly fall under the on-demand gig workers, right? They are, yeah. um, say, for example, the drivers of Uber and Ola, the delivery partners of Swiggy, Zomato, but it is true that all gigs are contractual in nature. They may be called in different terms. Mm -hmm. Like they, may, they are called as delivery partners in the case of um, business partners, in the case of delivery sector, they are independent contractors. But all gig work is basically contractual. Mm -hmm. So now when the issue of providing social security comes in, so why is social security important in the case of gig? Because if you are an employee of an organization, naturally you are covered under certain benefits, right? Yeah. You yes. get your PS, your gratuity, you get your leaves, and uh, uh, you know medical so insurance also. There's employment benefits. Yeah. Now, one of the reasons why uh, you know these platforms are enjoying this labor force is because they are not employees. The gigs mm -hmm. are not their employees, so they don't have to provide for all these kinds of uh, you know, employment benefits to their gigs. Mm -hmm. So the, the, then the question comes, who has to cover that? And that is where the need for providing the social security for gigs come in. And this is more important, especially for the contingent kind of workers whom you are talking about, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the lower income bracket and the lower skilled people who don't have much earning and they are dependent on these platforms for their livelihood. Now, if this classification is not clearly made, then the confusion would arise. And this classification is not seen either on the code on social security or on the bill that has been passed by Rajasthan. So that confusion would be there. And I hope they would be working on it very soon.
So how do we address it given that now there's a confusion, but we still have to give social security benefits for gig workers. How do we address it in the meanwhile? Correct. So as of now, there is nothing happening. Uh, the Ishram portal is meant for all unorganized workers. So those uh, gigs who are also belonging to the unorganized workers, looking for the unorganized sector, or if they can show themselves as poor, they can uh, register in this portal and get some benefits. Mm -hmm. but uh, not exclusively for gig workers. So they are not at the moment drawing any kind of benefits from anywhere. So the attempt should be towards, uh, you know, defining, having a clear definition of who should be covered under these social security schemes, which I'm sure uh, the boards will work out, which I'm sure all the state governments have to very quickly work out because what they are saying is, uh, see, no particular platform as well can directly provision for this security uh, benefits because when you call someone a gig, the gig can work for more than one company at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. That is why they are gigging. So if they want to have, uh, say, for example, uh, Uber drivers and Ola drivers, they have registered in both Uber and Ola platforms. They can register in any platform and they can switch on and off whichever uh, app they want at the time of what they're wanting to work. Now, uh, so for this reason, it is not possible for any particular platform to, you know, uh, give this kind of security measures directly. So what the Rajasthan bill says is that you've got to create a welfare fund in which there will be a share by the state and also by the platform. So the platforms are supposed to give their share of the, uh, you know, money to the fund. And they have not specified how much it is, though. And that discussion may be on. So this is where they create the fund and then moment the gigs are registered there, they can draw the benefits. So what part can the companies play right now in providing security? Because I'm assuming because if you they provide... Have they have to contribute to the fund and they can only indirectly give. They, they wouldn't be directly giving, but they in some cases like, you know, uh, these delivery workers and uh, drivers, Uber mm -hmm. roller drivers, they are given insurance only in the case of death. Yeah. So other insurances, they have requested the gigs, like for example, the insurance of the car, that something what the drivers have to do for themselves. Yeah. All the equipments are themselves. And that is why they are independent contractors, you know? Yeah. They are not obliged to give any kind of support in terms of the inputs that are required or the benefits and so on. So they are on their own. Though there is some kind of control exerted by the platform, the platform says your review feedback should be good for me to give you business. Mm -hmm. The platform says uh, uh, that you have to have you know, certain conditions when you register your car with us. So the pricing is set by the platforms in some cases. In some, in some cases, the prices are set by the gigs themselves. So there is control and that is where the entire debate on this employment classification came in, in, in India, in UK, in US. But in India, it has not been so very prominent because the geeks in India have not been wanting the employee status. That is what I see out of my study. They mm -hmm. are happy to be in contractors, but they are demanding for higher pay, lesser commissions. You know, the commission charged by the by these Uber and Ola is not small. Yeah. They charge a high commission. And that is where it is a very good thing. Recently, the, uh, the state government has introduced the Namayatri app. You know mm -hmm. that, right? Yes. So only for, as of now, open only for the auto rickshaws. So there is no commission there. Whatever we pay as passengers directly goes to the drivers. That so, is a very good move. And I hope there are more such apps coming up. I have a question. If I'm owning a company and if I want gig workers, I want to attract the best talent or the, or the people with the best qualifications to come to my company. So why aren't companies coming, coming up with innovative schemes to help their contract oh, workers and their gig they, workers? I, you know, I think I'm sure they have. Do you know in the U.S., this is some, again, some estimates. In the last two or three years, almost 90% of the new jobs that are created are gigs, hmm. are by the gigs. And gig is on a terrific rise even in the skilled sector. Hmm. Like, say, for example, IT consulting, marketing, strategy. It is not just uh, to do with the contingent workers. So I'm sure they already have some, you know, the gigs are automatically getting attracted. As I said, if they are looking for flexibility, they may also do some kind of moonlighting because a part of their work may be gigging and they may be employed elsewhere as long as the companies don't mind that. Hmm. So, uh, I mean, this is on the rise and uh, companies are attracting on its own.
So I like to end this podcast by looking at the bill Rajasthan has passed recently. It has a welfare board, a grievance redressal board, uh, and it also levies penalties on erring companies and this mechanism for gig workers to register themselves. We've already covered this in our podcast. If we combine this with the center's law, could it possibly provide a good social security net for our workers? So when you say center's law, which law are you talking about actually? I mean, are you meaning the labor codes that have come recently? Yes, ma'am. Ah, okay, so to speak about the new labor codes, as you know, uh, the labor codes got amalgamated and the four new labor codes came. One the code on wages came earlier and in 2020, you have the three other codes. Yes, ma'am. Now, the gigs are unfortunately covered only on the code on social security. Yeah. They are not covered on the code on industrial relation or on the code on occupational safety, health and working condition. They should have mentioned over there if the nature of contract between the gigs and their, uh, uh, you know, and the businesses could have been more dealt under there. And mm -hmm. occupational safety is equally important. You know, if you are informed, uh, what I was informed during my interviews with Uber Ola drivers was that on an average, an Uber driver or an Ola driver spends around 12 to 14 hours in road. Mm. And that's dangerous. That is, I mean, you know, they are driven by incentives. So naturally, there is a kind of uh, an attraction towards that. Uh, so it is pulling them to more work because they want to make more money. They are there for money. They say, what is it that has attracted you to this work? They say, ma'am, it is first uh, the money and second, it is the freedom. We don't have to, you know, ask for leave. Earlier mm. in our earlier employment, uh, it, we had to literally beg for leaves. Now it is not like that. You know, weekend, I just switch off and mm. I go to my hometown. Monday morning, I'll switch on whenever I want. If I want to work on a day for 15, 20 hours, I'll do it. Next two days, I'll take off, which is not possible if you're working for a cab agency and you are actually employed as a driver, right? Yeah. So this is what attracted them. But what is the problem? They are not able to realize the long-term consequences, right? Their health might fail yes. by doing that. It is a short-term benefit, but the long-term consequences are not realized. And this is where the state has to play the role. Now, there has to be some kind of medical benefits. There has to be coverage of insurance to the family. This, this is applicable to overall to all the unorganized workers and not just the gig workers. Yeah. The gig workers have come from the unorganized sector, as I said. They have largely come from the unorganized sector. So the Rajasthan bill is a very good move in that direction. It has very good provisions on welfare measures and asking the platforms to register and so on. But the centers, I mean, broadly, it is also outlined on the lines of the code on social security, what the labor code on the social security has specified. Now, the thing is, all the other states have to follow Rajasthan in coming up with the, these kinds of provisions and the bills. And I hope there is a move in that direction. So when that happens, it's now, I believe, a question of when rather than an if, because it will... Yeah, that I wouldn't be able to say, you know, it is with the state and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, with the different set of stakeholders. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be knowing as to how long it would take, but I, I am sure with the rise in gig workforce, they will be forced to do it very quickly. Yeah, so... Could this be the way ahead? So many states will take and build what the center's uh, social security code has already said. Exactly, exactly. They have to follow on similar lines. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us today. Thank you.